здравствуйте. Меня зовут Сева. Слава Чунюк, я приехал из Осло Норвегия. This presentation is going to be held in English. Okay, so my name is Sela Gretchen. I come from Norway. And I work for Avalon Solutions. Uh, we are Google Premium Partner and we are making uh, cloud solutions for our clients in uh, Google Cloud Platform. Uh, so our company is uh, mostly in the Nordics, so our headquarters is in Sweden, but we're also present in some other countries, even in Asia. Uh, this is a list of the few clients on which I worked uh, like recently. So Finno, that's the sort of largest website in Norway where you can uh, buy and sell of stuff. And they are running 500 microservices on the Kubernetes, so now we are moving them to the cloud. Uh, Rematusen, that's a kind of retail chain, and I'm currently developing a backend for their mobile app. Uh, then also a few other companies, for instance, Trelleborg, that's a kind of Swedish uh, kind of company for which I made for for which I made the IoT concept. A few words about GCP. So, what is a Google Cloud Platform? Mm, that's a public cloud from Google. It uh, provides a lot of solutions in all of the tech stacks. So you can find bunch of you can find bunch of solutions for for like data storage, for like machine learning and like things like this. What is very really important to know is that it runs on the same tool as the as the popular Google services such as YouTube, Gmail, Google Search. So you're actually getting the power of uh, those tools if you are working on the AGC. What is the problem? So, the kind of problem which I wanted to talk about today. Uh, every time I'm making a, some kind of solution for a client, there is a, a bunch of uh, sort of kind of common tasks that every customer faces. For instance, you need to make a backup of a database or uh, of a, like a persistent disk. You need to turn on or off your kind of virtual machine based on some monitoring. Or, or kind of health checking. You are also doing a bunch of kind of machine learning uh, uh, kind of processes. For instance, when like a new data camps, you must retrain a new model and then serve it. And there is a bunch of others. And uh, basically, all of those things they are like workflows. So um, uh, those like workflows, they have to be either kind of scheduled, or based on, uh, or they like, or they like have to be triggered based on something. Uh, they all have to be monitored, and also often they have to connect sort of kind of different components of a cloud. And often people uh, come up with a very bad solutions. For instance, they would either spin up a kind of virtual machine and then run a few cron jobs there. They would either do it manually, they would even sometimes develop their own softwares for that, or they won't even do it because they sort of don't know how to. And that, of course, means scalability problems and, uh, and also a lot of friction. So if you're making your own software, you're just wasting your time uh, to make like uh, to uh, make something which you shouldn't be making. Uh, what is the good solution for those problems? The good solution is Apache a a Airflow tool. So um, that's a platform where you basically it's a kind of central tool where you can uh, make your workflows as a code then you can sort of monitor them, schedule them, and do a bunch of other things with them. It was, the, it was first developed by Airbnb and then open sourced, and it also has a very large community. Uh, 
basically that's a workflow as a code solution, if I were to put it in one line. Uh, this is how the UI looks. So this is just a kind of central view all of the UI. So you have a list of your workflows there. And uh, you can sort of view the uh, kind of status of your workflow. You have also a bunch of other buttons which you can click and do something with it. And also there are many other views. This is just the main one. So I mean, this is how it looks like. So those of you who know Python may have noticed that this is actually a thingy which is called a flower. So a flower that's a UI on top of a salary and, and the salary is a task view manager for the Python. So <coughs> all of the workflows, they are written in the Python and uh, with the help of the salary. This is a high level diagram of uh, different components which are there. So you have scheduler, you have database. So you have scheduler, you have database, you have uh, message worker, and you have a bunch of workers also. And uh, basically they all talk to each other. And also you have like a, a web server which runs uh, Flower UI. Cloud Composer. That's Airflow in the Google Cloud, hosted in the Google Cloud. So that's uh, one of the possible uh, options to host it, and this is the best option in, uh, in my view. This is how the Airflow in the Google Cloud looks like. There are a few things to note here. So in like GCP, uh, all of the cloud resources, they live in the project. And for Cloud Composer, you actually have, you actually have two. One is tenant project, means it's managed by a, it's managed by a Google. You don't even see it. There you have database and and the web server and other things. They live in your own project, so means you can manage it. Uh, so in your project, you have workers, uh, you have Redis which run on the Kubernetes. And also there is, uh, uh, you also have uh, like a cloud storage, which is a blob storage on the Google Cloud where you have DAX logs and plugins. That is where they are stored. This is how it looks in the UI. So this is a kind of GCP console, and this is your, uh, this is uh, how it looks in the cloud. Just a good look on that. It actually <coughs> comes in a few flavors. So you, you have a few options of how to actually kind of deploy it. Uh, apart from the one which you see there, you can also uh, you can also kind of deploy it locally. So in uh, that case, you can still parallelize your workflows, but they will all they all will be running on on single node means on your machine. <coughs> then you can have this is like a new one. You can have it on the sort of Kubernetes in a kind of different form. How is that different? So uh, basically, uh, in such case, for every task, it will learn. It is going to launch like a new pod, which you can actually customize. You can actually specify how that pod should uh, look like. And what it gives to you, it gives you two things. You can optimize your cost, means that in any given moment in time, you will be only using those type resources which are necessary at your current workflow state. And also it gives you greater flexibility, means you can actually customize a pod for any specific task. Yeah, so uh, you can, uh, you can kind of, you can kind of host it locally, you can kind of deploy it, it whether it with either people or Docker. You can uh, run it on the Kubernetes. There are many help charts for that. You can use uh, kind of software as a service solutions such as astronomer.io. If you like in, if you are a fan of IAC and my uh, favorite tool for that is a Terraform. So in a Terraform you actually have a special code 
provider, so you can also use like Terraform to uh, like deploy it to uh, just. So <coughs> this the main concept there is uh, a thing which is called DAG. This is so if you want to write a workflow, you, uh, every workflow takes a form of a DAG. So basically, it is a graph which uh, has a set of tasks. Every node of a graph is a task, and uh, those tasks, they also are connected in a certain way. So you can specify certain kind of conditions under which uh, any given task will actually be uh, read. And it's also kind of flexible, so you can have many kind of conditions, and you can also either schedule or trigger it in in like many ways. You can actually trigger by some other deck, or even from outside of uh, GCP itself. Uh, this is uh, two samples of a deck. First one is like very simple one. Second one is uh, more like complicated. So Airflow is very flexible. You can actually get any setup which you need, and it will fit all of your possible for all of your possible workflow. Uh, what it actually takes to write a deck. There are a few key uh, concepts, those, so I will only touch on a few, there are many, but I will only mention a few main uh, concepts which you need to get started with the writing workflows with Airflow. The first concept is operator, and that is a task. So every task in Airflow takes the form of an operator. It actually kind of defines what has to be done. There are th uh, three most powerful ones, they are more kind of generic ones. So, bash, Python, and HTTP, so you can run any bash script. You can execute any Python global, or uh, you can make any HTTP call to any API, for instance. But before using those, or before writing your own, do please check out whether there is any operator. <coughs> which fits your workflow. Uh, there are like sort of bunch of places where you can look for them. It's actually sometimes pretty hard to find the one which you need, but so I have listed a few places where you can look for. So there are one sort of uh, specific to kind of GCP. There are also one, uh, um, there's also a kind of hub repo for plugins. And also, there are a lot of, kind of contributions. So there are actually a lot of them. This is just a sample. This is not all of them. This is just a few. So you can see that there is like sort of they cover all of the possible sort of systems which are out there. For instance, you can even have things like Mailchimp and Stripe. There's also a bunch of things not only for GCP but also for AWS, for instance, SageMaker, S. SQS and things like this. So there are many of them do. So please check out that first. This is a sample of uh, what you get for one of the tools. So a PubSub is a messaging service on a GCP. And for that service, you have a bunch of operators. So you can create or delete a topic, like publish to a topic. Uh, so basically, all of the things which you can think of for the pops up, you have an operator for that. Uh, Kubernetes pod. So this is uh, the thing which I have touched before. So uh, you can actually uh, specify that your task should be run on a specific Kubernetes pod. And you can specify a setup of the pod. It actually supports almost all the uh, almost all the setups which you have in the uh, Kubernetes, but not all. For instance, <coughs> you cannot yet launch free empty VM. Uh, yes, but I think soon that uh, you will have it soon also. Hooks. 
uh, that's another concept. So hooks is a container for the connection for a system. So basically, uh, um, it's a building block for a task. So every operator will actually be using some hook or even more hooks and will call some of the methods on that hook. So hook holds a connection somewhere to uh, something and operator adds some business logic on top of it. So for instance, for a PAPSA, uh, which we have seen before, the operator is actually using a hook publisher. You like, cannot see the, uh, the you uh, like, cannot see the like, lines of code here, but so it's on, uh, on the next to the last line. You see who the uh, who publish a sensor. That's a special kind of an operator. It's very useful in some cases. So what it does is that it will keep running until certain condition is met. For instance, uh, it is like very useful if you need to watch the file system for for like some file to be changed or like for you, whatever. If you need to pull from a message queue, or if you need to launch a any HTTP request, those are sometimes very useful for GCP metadata. Um, yeah, this is a list of the sensors which you have. So there's also a bunch of sensors. Uh, which you can actually use. XCOM, that's the last concept which I want to touch upon. So every task should be viewed on a kind of conceptual level as a kind of separate from, from all the other tasks. It means it's not a kind of data pipeline. So uh, all of the tasks, they only kind of depend on the status of the previous tasks and you don't pass kind of data around. But if you do need to pass some uh, data to other tasks, this is also possible with an XCOM. That's essentially a dictionary, so you can push any key and uh, values there, and the dictionary will also provide task ID and the timestamp. So if you do need to pass some uh, sort of data around, you can use the best thing. Uh, some of the benefits of having airflow on the GCP. First of all, share the BBC. So I mentioned that in the GCP, all of the kind of resources, they live in the project. And every project has its own network. This network is called BBC, which stands for Virtual Private Cloud. But if you have several projects, for instance, uh, if you have a kind of database, that's like usually lives in like some project, but then you may have several other apps which are basically which are like using the same database. So since they live in separate networks, you actually have to go to a kind of public web to, to talk to like some other projects. But in GCP, you have a concept of shared network, means you can actually merge networks. And from uh, Airflow, you can actually use kind of resources from other projects too. Private IP. <coughs> I mean, it's clear what it is. A bunch of airflow components, they have uh, kind of virtual machines. For instance, all of the Kubernetes pods, they're running on virtual machines and also an SQL server. So if you want to, so basically like those like virtual machines, you can actually specify that they should only have a private IP. And I see with a Terraform, I have mentioned that uh, so an example. So this is a this is a sample project which I where I used uh, Cloud Composer. So this is a very complicated diagram. But um, you if you see like a, like if you see add the red dots, those are the uh, kind of components which are Cloud Composer related. So we had an app like a web app where a client was uploading some files. So this is a project for a fintech startup. A client was uploading some file, then through a backend the file went to a cloud storage. And when the file comes, we actually wanted to do several things. First of all, we 
we have to store it in a database, so launch an e-tail job with Cloud Dataflow. And also, so when the job is finished, when the data is stored, we want it to run some kind of machine learning, for instance. We have some kind of Spark jobs running on the Hadoop cluster. So uh, that's an event driven data pipeline. So it has been triggered by some event, file upload in that case. When that, when, uh, so basically, when the file comes in, we want to do two things. We want to consume data and use this data to retrain machine learning model. This is a sort of kind of component. So this is like a kind of same diagram, but in a more like kind of simple manner. So app uploads the file, file triggers ETL job, and then this sort of kind of the uh, the kind of, kind of results of a job are then used to in some machine learning workflow. Uh, yeah, this is what I have thought for. Yes. And also, uh, when a beam job completes, when our ETL job completes, we also want to send a Slack message to kind of notify our team that this has, has that this has happened. So, how does the deck actually look like? Uh, the first part of a deck is uh, you sort of write which all the components you want to use. So usually you will import some operators there. And this is also clear, right? The second part is the deck setup. And there are a few things to note here. First of all, since this deck is triggered, we don't have any schedule there. So right, since it's triggered. The second important thing is sort of deck ID. It is very important to keep to sort of keep portion because in the UI there is no clear way to understand which version of a deck you are currently running. We, uh, we are going to see uh, we are going to see like a bit later how the deck is actually being kind of deployed. But so it's a very good practice to always keep a version there. For instance, here I am writing that it's like version six. So I'm able to see which version of the deck is currently running. The next part is variables. There are two types of them. One of them is you can get it from an env, right? So this is sort of the uh, set of variables which are set up at the Airflow deployment level and can then be consumed by all of the decks. But there is also a second type of uh, variable, so you can actually pass a variable to a DAG at the runtime. So for instance, in that case, our DAG was uh, triggered by a cloud function, and the cloud function can actually pass some variables. So this is line 54, where you have, it actually takes a bit of a different form. If you know Python, that's a kind of Jinja template. So uh, it actually is kind of it actually uses a tool which is called Jinja uh, for uh, to actually feed those variables to the deck. So two types of variables. Tasks. Then we specify the tasks. For our case, we uh, were lucky. We found all of the operators which we needed. So first one is like sort of that flow template, and three are three. And three rest, the basically those are kind of the problem. Uh, two things to note here the so the hub cluster has two preemptible workers, and the last task has a trigger rule, means it will only be launched if all of the other tasks are sort of done, which makes sense because you want to kind of delete a cluster only if it was created, for instance. This, so this is the last step in specifying a deck. You just specify the order of execution of, of a tasks, right? So this is 
pretty simple. We have uh, uh, so here like it was a linear one, so it is like pretty simple to specify. And this is how it looks in the, in the UI. So uh, like I mean, this is sort of a kind of plain view, but when it is one, you also have in the sort of top right corner you have different status of your workflow and also a bunch of other things. So this is how this workflow looks like in the UI. Uh, one other thing to mention, uh, I have mentioned that this workflow was triggered by a cloud function and it's sometimes not very easy to uh, write one, but it's actually very simple. You only need to specify the sort of uh, special URL which you need to call and, and and then there you can also see how we are passing variable batch ID in that case which is a let's say for instance like a file name or something and the last step is to sort of deploy it it is like very simple you just need to upload your Python file to as to a kind of special Google Cloud storage bucket and kind of scheduler, it will pick it up. I mean, there is like a time lag, but it's not that big. I'm, I think in general it takes like a few uh, minutes for a scheduler to pick up uh, an latest version of your deck. So very simple, just upload it to the bucket. And this is a bucket like itself. So this is a Google Cloud Storage bucket. This is how it looks in the GCP console. Uh, you would just upload your text there and they will be picked up by a scanner. I also mentioned Slack, so if you want to get like notified, you can send a message to a Slack. Here you can sort of make it in a two-way, either by calling Slack API, right? Or there is also a special operator for that, so you can do it in a two ways. And we have two tasks we have two sort of types of messages. One is for success, one is for fail. And they all have different trigger rules. So one gets triggered only if it, uh, only if it fails. The second one gets triggered if it like succeeds. And this is uh, how we add it to a deck. In the previous sample, we were using add bitwise to like, specify it, but you can also use a method, special method, and you can sort of put it in the deck in a sort of different manner, either upstream or like downstream. All right. And once uh, once done this is how the updated deck will uh, look like. So from ETL job we have three nodes. I mean and they are so only two of them will get triggered. So once ETL job is like completed we proceed to creating a hub cluster and then we also, <coughs> then we are also sending a kind of conditional stack message. Another sample. So um, this is all a sort of a kind of a sort of better solution of a previous sample. Um, so the good way of doing such uh, things is that you will have usually what is called a staging bucket and the target bucket. So when in, basically when you have like a new file, you don't want to trigger your job kind of straight away, but you want to do some checks with it. So you first put it in a kind of staging bucket, then you will do something with it, check maybe. <coughs> let's say check whether it's a kind of duplicate file for instance and only of uh, and only if all is okay you are copying to a target bucket which uh, like kind of triggers the things which we have which we saw in the previous sample so the the, the uh, kind of workflow for the best scenario is that your uh, your like, good job should like monitor this like staging bucket and then copy its contents to a target bucket. So what is different from a previous scenario? Here it is actually scheduled. So we specify that it's, it should be run every hour. And if you do that, you should also take note of a catch-up parameter. 
means that uh, what it means is so if you set it to false it will create a job only for your kind of latest run but it will not fill the time periods between the duck start dates and now we don't want that to happen we only want to like start it now uh, list objects in buckets you have an operator for that like already I mean pretty simple just use them and um, as you can see those are pushing list of uh, files to an XCOM so when we check the bucket our operator is going to push a list of files which it found to an XCOM which we will then sort of kind of consume in a in the next task. So this is the Python callable which actually consumes files from an XCOM. And if you are using an XCOM, there is one thing to note here. So an XCOM lives in, in the like runtime context. So you have to provide context to a Python callable so that it can grab this XCOM dictionary from a context. And then, so basically, since it's a sort of kind of like kind of dummy job, it actually does nothing. It, it sort of sort of just kind of lists it. But here in that function, you will have your sort of business logic. What exactly do you want to check, and uh, how you want to like sort of proceed? And you pull from an XCOM by specifying that ID. Um, yes, so this is the last one, this is the sort of copy, this is where we copy an object from one bucket to another bucket. It's sort of custom operator which we wrote, but it's very simple <coughs> how you write it. You need two things, first you need to specify a constructor, you uh, have to use a like operator, it is going to uh, <coughs> be based on that. So you specify a constructor and in the second step in the method you specify what exactly it means like to be done, some kind of logic, but at the end of the day you will be using a hook. So on the last line you are using hook uh, copy. So very simple, just add some business logic and then use some hook. In uh, that case we needed a Google Cloud storage hook. And the last step when we specify the, uh, how the tasks look and the deck is like complete here it, like it's also linear you know, one by one. so uh, thank you and uh, if you have some questions Вот у нас есть просто 
есть у нас Google Production, есть стейджинг. Мы делаем сначала в как стейджинг, и потом идем в продакшн. Спасибо за доклад. Я, возможно, немножко прослушал или опоздал, потому что а, можете еще раз повторить, а, чем конкретно вы занимаетесь ваш продукт? Э, значит, а, я вот работаю в фирме, которая она делает разные продукты для, для, для наших клиентов. То есть, все эти продукты, они всегда будут в как GCP, да, но их много, то есть мы делаем разные продукты. Ну вот конкретно пример был с инфраструктурой, построенной с машинным обучением, с, три, ну, с триггерами а, и с попаданием да, в а, а я понял, да. Это был как бы финтек стартап. Вот, а, файл как бы, содержал список финансовых сделок на Форексе. Вот. И э, дальше шел ряд как бы, вычислений. Э, ну, я как бы здесь не, вот, как бы, не могу говорить, что ну, то есть, как бы, э, э, вот это как бы, коммерческая там, информация, да, что там было именно, но э, как бы, сам вот, суть контекста – это как бы, финтех стартап, и он делал некоторые как бы, расчеты с помощью файла, а файл как бы содержал список финансовых сделок. То есть э, с помощью машинного обучения вы строили некоторые модели для просчета именно сделок? <связывая> это как бы не была торговля, а это была как бы штука вот, как бы, с тем связана, что э, фирма она как бы давала как бы, честные ставки для, для того форекса. То как бы сама модель, она как бы делала расчет свой маркап. Маркап – это как бы маржа между как бы честной ценой на рынке и той ценой, которую вы, значит, вы там получаете. Да? Вот. И а, вот если фирма, как компания, она на том форексе покупает какую-то валюту, да? она в банк идет, например, и ей банк дает какой-то курс. Но банк получает другой курс, потому что он там имеет выход на вот, рынок. Да. И его получается как бы, модель, она, вот, как бы, она, она как бы, рассчитывала тот вот марк, вот, вот, как бы, сейчас, как бы, маркап, который клиент получит. Там были как бы, разные параметры. Значит, какой как бы, размер сделки, имя банка, время дня, валюта, а, что-то еще по я уже так не понял. Я понял, спасибо. Еще вопросы? Да, вот еще вопросы. Спасибо за доклад. В общем, это Гугловское облако, мы изучали вопрос для России в наступном, на самом деле, только через субподрядчиков, по-моему, это называется. Я думаю, можно просто на сайте. Просто сейчас заходил, и мы уже пишем, что только субподрядчики доступны. То есть из России как специалист. Я, честно, вообще, я вообще как бы не в курсе. Я, ну, я даже не знаю, как это, в принципе, можно бы блокироваться. А, то есть там как получается? Вы делаете эту оплату с помощью карточки, а вот российские карточки, я не знаю, как сейчас. Софтлайн есть. Ну, софтлайн, да. Это чисто софтлайн. Ну, рублями скорее всего, это софтлайн. Ну, кстати, сейчас офлайн через месяц вы будете все это платеж рублями. А вы извините. Хочу просто ответить на вопрос за, по поводу того, что использование в России, да, оно открыто, но если его используем, недавно на него переехали. Там проблема в том, что, насколько я знаю, в России только пока с юристами заключают э, подряд, с визитами их нельзя. Но в целом такого проблем нет. Также карточка привязываешь и вот так будет. Так что давайте переходить.